First of all, I want to thank uh, Rosalind Fielder for the organization of this event and uh, to greet the guests at the, at the Democratic Convention in Ireland. I'm very pleased to join you with this short presentation that I have called an economic approach to blockchain democracy or central bank blockchain democracy. My name is Brandon Reda. I'm the founder of EcoDemocracy. At EcoDemocracy in Colombia, we attempted in 2014 congressional elections to articulate the Congress with citizens by using a platform for direct electronic democracy. Last year, in 2017, we attempted to provide the same solution by presenting a list of 11 citizens to transfer the vote of the people directly into Congress online. We have not been able to reach those goals. We have learned, however, a lot about the system and we are eager to continue growing as a political party in the future. For this presentation, I understand that I have a lapse of 10 to 15 minutes, and for that I want to divide my presentation into three topics. First of all, I would like to refer to the concept of democracy from a political perspective, and how in this perspective the concept of democracy falls customarily on demagogy or lies. Speaking from South America, I think this is a fundamental issue, especially nowadays, where thousands of Latin Americans are leaving their home, escaping from totalitarianism, to start again in a foreign country. Second, I want to refer to the concept of democracy from a systemic perspective and how this definition has to fit into a new discussion about democracy itself and how it forces us to think that technology and the future not only give shape to the external part, the shell of democracy, represented in institutions and rules of the game, but also to shape our minds and brains, to understand and set up new conceptions of democracy itself. Third, I want to link this new conception of democracy with the economic system, and particularly with the advances that technology in general, and particularly blockchain technology, is contributing to contemporary societies and can offer to the institution of central banking, an institution fundamental for the modern nation state. To start, I want to refer first to the concept of democracy and how this concept naturally tends to be used to inspire citizens, generally appealing to their passions, but usually, especially in Latin America, derives in great humanitarian tragedies. While the Conference for Democracy in Ireland is taking place in Latin America, thousands of men, women and children, young and older people, every day are leaving Venezuela. There is no fuel. They have to walk hundreds of kilometers to get to Colombia, from where I am speaking to you. They are basically escaping from famine, famine left by people who originally spoke about democracy in Venezuela, the richest country of the region, now by far the poorest. In this sense, I think it is imperative to remember the human, humanitarian, moral, economic and political crisis that has plunged Venezuela in almost two decades, Cuba for more than 50 years, and Nicaragua in recent weeks, where more than 300 young people have died fighting for freedom. This is the great question of democracy, at least from the perspective of the nation-state. And this is a question that I believe the Convention on Democracy in Ireland should also address as part of our reflection on the political concept of democracy. This reflection, I think, is fundamental to understand what is the approach that the citizens of this century should give to the concept of democracy, and especially considering the great penetration that technology, science and economics in all its manifestations have in contemporary societies. This, I believe, is also a reflection to understand that in the 21st century, no definition of democracy can be absent from the systemic implications that technology and knowledge have left. That one should not return to a concept of democracy based on a minimalist conception of contemporary societies. That the contemporary society is complex, not only socially, but also and especially systemically, informationally and technologically, and that reducing democracy to simple approaches does not introduce more democracy, but less democracy, chaos and injustice. Second, I want to refer to an economic approach to democracy, and particularly to what I call blockchain democracy. For this, it is important to consider democracy as a social construction able to be sophisticated, this means that in each stage of history, its application differs, keeping always two immutable variables. First, that humans are able to reach higher stages of political organization dialogically, that means via communication, language, science, and advanced stages or 
comprehension of the outside world and coordination in the evolution of societies. Second, that each human holds a single portion of political power of the society as a whole. As such, democracy is a perfectible social and cultural construction on governments inspired by two factual features of humans. First, the capacity of the individual to be a natural owner of a single fraction of the general political power. And second, the capacity of individuals to participate, decide, engage, interact, and coordinate decisions dialogically with other individuals as members of society. In this perspective, the above mentioned assumptions can constitute the principles from which new conceptions and applications of democracy evolve. The institutional, systemic, procedural, formal, or historical representation of those assumptions vary over time, and therefore democracy deals on how to better understand the different institutional and technological structures of modern societies that allow increasing levels of autonomous social coordination, meaning higher levels of democracy as self-governance and social complexity. It is in this approach where modern societies are highly indebted to the economic system and to the formal educational systems. On the one hand, without the contemporary economic system, and particularly without the market economy, we wouldn't have modernity, and as such, we would not be able to get increasingly in permanent global complex interactions. However, the contemporary market economy is based on techniques, regulations, and technologies that go back to the early nation state. From these techniques and technologies, we often conceive the institutions that form our democracies and economies. As such, we take for granted solutions that have certainly contributed to higher stages of social complexity, but solutions, institutions, techniques, and technologies that need to be upgraded. The second variable has been the appropriation of technical and technological education into social systems. Hence, complex subsystems of education enhance the transition of traditional structures of organization to science-based and rational complex structures. Today, the world is a totally different systemic organism, defined by new ways in which humans interact and reach higher stages of social, technical and political sophistication. It is in this historical moment where blockchain technology and blockchain solutions offer the capacity to conceive an institutional upgrade to democratic conventions. The blockchain technology is commonly known as the technology behind Bitcoin, the most accepted cryptocurrency of the world. It mixes up previous contributions on cryptology and software automatization protocols to create solutions that eliminate intermediation, ensuring trust between individuals using the system. The functional quality of blockchain technology lays in its potential to automate complex transactions between peers of a network, avoiding intermediaries, asymmetric power between agents of the system, and ensuring different levels of security and privacy in a decentralized ledger stored by users. Finally, it is in this quality of the technology where I would like to address the possibility to replace a fundamental institution of the modern nation state that is central banking. Let me explain myself. The figure of the central bank is necessarily connected to the figure of the nation state. Specifically, it was precisely the ability to issue currency which led some families to embrace bourgeois private law, which subsequently was incorporated into the first nation states. Specifically, creating currency is a right that each state of the planet has. This right comes hand in hand with the right to profit from the seniorage right, that is, to earn money by issuing currency. The income of each country by right of seniorage is derived from the difference between the value of money and the cost to produce and distribute it. The United States, for instance, benefit from the fact that they produce currency that has to be used for the rest of the planet, that is currency that is official for international transactions globally. Generally speaking, each country creates its own currency, and generally the currency is created by central banks. As such, central banks represent a fundamental column of the modern nation state, and therefore central banks represent a taken for granted assumption of modern democracies. Intrinsically, the contemporary political systems of the nation state, called democracies, are inevitably articulated with the contemporary economic system, and each domestic economic system is bounded to the institutions of central banks. Finally, as the name central bank implies, central banks are centralized. That is, there is just a few actors behind, those who have the right to issue currency 
and as such to profit from this service. At this point, the question is, if we speak about blockchain democracy, should we only speak about politics? Or is it possible to bring the notion of democracy and decentralization to the modern economic system in order to develop protocols that decentralize banking and specifically public central banking? That is a question to be addressed in the future. I'm confident this is a question we shall also discuss in the upcoming years at the Democratic Convention to make blockchain democracy a systemic reality. Thank you.